We're going to look at some cognate roots to help fill out our idea of Yara, Torah. Cognate roots are roots that are related to each other by linguistic rules of sound shift. And we're going to look at Yara with an Aleph, Yara with an Ayin, and Yarach with a Chet. Yara with an Aleph, a Strong's 3372, means to fear or to revere. The first mention is Genesis 3.10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Talking about Adam, I'm sure you know the story. In Genesis 15.1, After these things the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. Exodus 1.17, But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Also the meaning to reverence, Leviticus 19.30, Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am Yahweh. Psalm 89.7, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. There's been a lot of discussion of this idea of fear. Are we supposed to fear God or not fear God or does it just mean reverence or what does this word mean? And I think that we can see that there is an appropriate fear that we need to have of God at the same time we reverence him. We'll I'll talk about that more in a minute. Another related word is nora. As you study Hebrew, you will learn that the nun prefix uh, will still bring a related idea. The word nora in uh, Israel, in modern Hebrew, is used to mean both awful or a lot or awesome. In the biblical Hebrew, we see the Strong's translation, uh, the King James translation as being awesome or terrible. Uh, we don't mean terrible like bad or evil. We mean awesome or something that is to be feared. Deuteronomy 7.21 Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for Yahweh thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. You see the Young's literal translation, fearful, the NASB as awesome. Psalm 47.2 For Yahweh Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Again, with a mem prefix, mora, it is the object of reverence or the object of fear. Genesis 9, 2, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Psalm 76, 11, Vow and pay unto Yahweh your God. Let all that be round him, about him bring presence unto him that ought to be feared that is one word in hebrew it is mora and if you search out who is bringing the presence in psalm 68 you will see that kings are bringing presence to the one who inhabits the temple here is another cognate root yara with an ayin which means to tremble, to quiver, or to displease, that feeling, that motion of shaking or trembling. Genesis 21, 11, And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. In Genesis 38, 10, in the story of Judah with his sons being disobedient, and the thing which he did displeased Yahweh, wherefore he slew him also. In Psalm 106.32, They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes. A word that's related to this is Uriad. It's, these are the curtains which are around the tabernacle. This word does not refer to the to the curtain that uh, is between the holy place and the most holy place but it does refer to all the curtains that are around the outside of the tabernacle 
And it comes from the idea of shaking. You imagine that curtain in a, in a breeze or in a wind and it's shaking. Exodus 26, 2. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. In Psalm 104, 2, talking about creation. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Another root is Yarach with a Chet. And this refers to a month or a lunar cycle or the moon. It's pronounced Yareach when it's the moon. I know you probably know some other words for moon um, and month. Chodesh from the idea of Chadash, something that's new, that's the new moon. And Chodesh is a period of one lunar cycle based on when does the new moon uh, come in the sky. Another word for new moon is levana, which comes from the word lavan, which means white. When we see that first white piece of moon in the sky, that crescent, that's called levana. Yerech is also a word that means moon or a monthly cycle. Exodus 2.2 2. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. This is, of course, talking about Moses. Psalm 104, 19. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Isaiah 60, 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. As far as the idea of trembling or affecting the insides or doing something in a direction, having an impact on something, we know that the moon affects the tides. The moon gives direction to the tides. There's also some effect of moon on flowering plants and vegetables. So all these ideas are related to one another. So what does Torah mean in the spiritual life of a believer? Torah has a much broader understanding and application than just law. We live in a civil world and a civil government. We have a perception of law. But the Torah is Yahweh's teaching and instruction. It gives us a direction, a way to go. It uh, gives us a limitation in our activities which is good for us. Yahweh is your creator and he made good laws for you to follow. Um, it also refreshes us like rain, the rain that comes for righteousness sake. It teaches us the correct fear of Yahweh. As I said before, there is some discussion of this. We read in 2 Timothy, 1 verse 7 that God hath not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind on the other hand Yeshua told us in Matthew 10 28 fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell so we do not need to walk around like cowering ants uh, underneath the, the tyrannical reign of some despot because that is not a picture of Yahweh our God. The picture is that he does have the power to send us to hell and on the basis of what? Of whether we are walking with him and walking in his ways. But we should not hold that as a burden because Yahweh loves us and he's given us ways to go, directions to go, and limits to our activities. Just as a curtain, we talked about the curtain earlier, the curtain defines the area uh, that is holy to Yahweh. And so we need to have a defined area as, as people. The word of Yahweh, the Torah, restricts our activities in a positive way. Just as the moon has an impact on the tides, Torah has an impact on us, and we impact others as we live out Torah. 
I'm sure there are other inferences that you can think about as you think about these related roots for Torah. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayam al Hashamayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.